Last summer, we did a number of hikes in the Mount Rainier National Park. Our focus was mainly on peaks and summits, but it was at the height of wildflower season, and we definitely noticed the wildflowers. So I wanted to do a look back video at all the wildflowers we'd seen because it was absolutely spectacular. Welcome to another video. Today we're at uh, Mount Rainier National Park, and um, uh, we stopped here to check out these wildflowers. They're just like phenomenal, um, but it is like really, really, really uh, foggy. When we left the house, it was a clear morning in the 70s and promising to be another hot day in the 90s. Three and a half hours later, we were on the roadside in Mount Rainier National Park at Paradise with the temperature reading 42 degrees Fahrenheit in the fog, wishing I had brought a jacket. Here we have Gray's licorice root. It's a species of flowering plant in the carrot family. Here we have the avalanche lily or white avalanche lily, often found in large fields appearing like a snowfield or avalanche, thus the common name. Here we have the magenta paintbrush, also known as crimson paintbrush, rosy paintbrush, small flowered paintbrush. The brush part of the paintbrush is not the flower, but is similar to dogwoods. The colored petals are actually bracts, which shelter the true blooms. This is the most abundant of the five species of paintbrush found in the Rainier National Park. I am not sure what these are. Like little pink balls and spider's web right there and rosy spirea. These well-known little shrubs can produce a dazzling floral display bearing dense clusters of small pink flowers on numerous short slender stems. Sookdorf's buttercup or snow patch buttercup, an early bloomer often seen at the edge of melting snow in mountain meadows. Still have a snow, patches of snow. Check it out. Oh, more avalanche lilies. Oh. Wow. Let's just get right in there nice and close. Here we have Pasque, or maybe it's Pasque flower, or Western anemone in the flowering stage. The common name means Easter flower in reference to its early blooming. We saw the Pasque, or maybe it's the Pasque flower in its flowering stage. And here we see it in the seed head stage. Here we're looking at purple lupin or Arctic lupin, Lupinus latifolius. Genus lupinus, derived from lupus, meaning wolf, in reference to devouring the soil. Species latifolius means with broad leaves. Usually found in open forests and meadows below, below about 5,500 feet. Sitka valerian. The Alaskan Tlingit name is medicine that stinks, apparently in reference to its uh, fragrance, which uh, isn't all that pleasant. I like that. You have the white lilies, and you got the snow field up top. I like that. Okay, so here we are in the middle of July, and we are walking on snow. J.B. Flett wrote, in 1922, the features of the flora of Mount Rainier National Park and he said, Moist meadows are the real natural flower gardens of the mountain, surpassing perhaps in beauty of color, number of species, and luxuriance of growth any other alpine region in the world. Here we have the Mount Rainier Lossword. I feel very lucky to have seen this flower. It's endemic and it grows only in a few locations in Mount Rainier National Park. Uh, the species uh, Rainierensis is for Mount Rainier National Park. Again, to quote J.B. Flett, 
On passing through a dense cluster of alpine trees and emerging for the first time into one of these gardens, one of the most noted of the bot botanical visitors to the park last summer stopped and repeated the word, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. This was the verdict of a man whose long and successful life had been devoted to botanical research, not only in his own country, but in nearly every other country of the world. Uh, the Spallflower Meadows, they're just incredible. Um, we were going to go to uh, Utah this, uh, this month to visit my old uh, hiking areas to see wildflowers like this, but uh, we uh, changed our plans. So uh, we came here to Rainier and um, this place, uh, just, just like I keep saying, is not his point. Mount Rainier's renowned wildflowers bloom for a limited amount of time every year. The peak bloom for wildflowers is heavily dependent on weather and precipitation. In most years, many flowers will be blooming by mid-July, and by the 1st of August, the meadows should be very impressive, bursting with color. Here we have the glacier lily, also known as the yellow avalanche lily, pale fawn lily, yellow fawn lily, and dogtooth violet. It's a smaller version of the white avalanche lily, but still showing a beautiful flower. Kind of flux. It's pretty good there clump of right there. And more dog tooth violet. Oh, that's just amazing. So, I don't know what this is, but it is stunning. And we're looking at uh, pink mountain heather. I was uh, quite impressed with this uh, wildflower. It's uh, like a giant ball of color. Growing in the water. The snow melt and more. Oh yeah, here we go. All these little, all this area are probably full of wildflowers at some point. After it finishes melting. Warms up. Here we're looking at uh, marsh marigold. It grows in wet soils, as you can see here, and very close to receding snowbanks. At the edge of the snow, you will be amazed at myriads of these marigolds. You will even find them poking through the snow and in shallow snow caves. Wow, look at that fern. Jeez. Now that's a fern. This, I believe, is uh, called a fragile fern, but I'm not certain. Here we're looking at partridge foot, also known as creeping spirea, mountain spirea, spirea pectinata, uh, referring to the leaves. Uh, the common name refers to the leaves which resemble a footprint of a ptarmigan or a partridge. The tiny white flowers are quite showy and form tight clusters with yellow centers, which make the overall cluster appear cream colored. Okay, we've got some bear grass here. And ah, here we have bear grass. Unfortunately, this is all that I saw that day at Paradise. The spectacular flower reminds me of a wedding dress, and I have to say, I think it's one of my favorite wildflowers. And here we have a scarlet columbine. It's usually found growing along streams on the edges of meadows between 2,500 feet and 5,500 feet elevation. Um, the species name is Formosa, which is Latin for beautiful. Normally the flowers are one to two inches in size, at least most that I have seen in the past. Um, but these particular flowers, for some reason, were very small, about the size of a penny and maybe smaller. I don't know why. If anyone knows why they would be so small, put in the comments. And here we have common paintbrush. And I mean, in Mount Rainier National Park, this is common paintbrush. It's also known as scarlet paintbrush, giant red Indian paintbrush. The species Miniata is derived from minimum, meaning scarlet red in Latin. Along the roadsides of paradise, growing like weeds, this paintbrush thrives. And here we're looking at broadleaf arnica. In conclusion, again, the words of J.B. Flett. A satisfactory description of a natural flower bed has not come to the writer's observation, nor does he expect to write one now. If by means of this article, more people shall be brought in touch with the mountain and its wonderful flora, he will be satisfied. These flower beds must be seen and their fragrance inhaled before a full comprehension of them can be realized. The more one sees them, 
the more does he realize their infinite beauty and the full significance of the spiritual lessons which these floral emblems teach.